Stalin told the people that the Hitlerites were beasts and that they must be stopped, whatever the cost. The Russian people must show the fascists that they were not to be the rulers of Europe. Stalin, Churchill and Roosevelt formed the anti-Hitlerite pact in 1942. Stalin made a joke to Molotov. It is so funny, comrade. We are seen by democracies as one of them. We all wanted to clear Hitler's Nazis out of Russia. My parents and my sister were in Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, and they were under German control. There was no way that I could find out if they were alive and well. General Paulus was the commander of the 6th Army and was fighting desperately in the city of Stalingrad. We had the opportunity to take the city in July of 42, as Paulus' men moved towards the Volga River. Two weeks later, Hitler ordered the city to be taken. A fierce and costly battle followed that lasted through the winter and into the next year. Now, after Stalingrad, we knew that the Germans were not invincible. We knew that our fighting men could push them back and that soon we would clear the fascists from Russia. A great Russian poet wrote in the paper that the Russian troops were to repay the Germans for what they had done to Russia. But Stalin later said no. Stalin said that the German people were also the victims of fascism. And only the war criminals were to pay. Hitler's come and go, he said. But the German people and the German state remain forever. Stalin was now confident that the victory would be his. He was now looking at building stronger relations with the Western democracies. I was sent to the planning meeting for the United Nations at Dumbarton Oaks in Washington, D.C. in the summer of 1944. Stalin looked over the list of those attending the United Nations meeting from the other countries. The delegations were all high-ranking government and military officials. The other countries had sent admirals from the Navy, but we were sending only a captain. Captain can't talk directly with an admiral, Stalin barked. Why are we not sending an admiral? I explained that the captain was very qualified and spoke perfect English, and that all the tickets had been purchased and the captain's name had been forwarded. Give me a pen, Stalin snapped at me. He took the pen and crossed out the title captain and wrote in the word admiral. There, he said. Now he can talk to them. When I returned to the Kremlin, I was told to immediately follow Molotov and Stalin to Yalta, where there was to be a conference with Roosevelt and Churchill. I had no time to do more than replace my suitcase of clothes and catch a flight out of Moscow the same evening. At Yalta, the zones of occupation and influence were decided. Stalin was to have a clear run on Berlin, and he planned to take it by May 1st. Hundreds of thousands of Russians stormed the city. They fought desperately. Many of them died needlessly. In a few days, the city would fall anyway. I arrived at the Führer bunker for the afternoon briefing. Everyone was quiet and solemn. Hitler, I was told, had shot himself and his new bride Eva Braun a few hours earlier. We were winning. Soon there would be a new age in Europe. Not Hitler's new age, not even Lenin's and Stalin's new age. A bitter and fierce war has been fought by all the world, and this mighty struggle had ripped apart the old order. 
the new Europe would be different. The new world would be different. I longed for a world of freedom and understanding. A world where lives and dreams were respected. Ever since I was an infant, I had always believed such a world was possible. That it was out there somewhere and that someday I would find it. Oh 